I've been mainly a lurker on YouTube for a long time now. I like to follow discussions about atheism and religion and American politics. And so I became interested in the current debate about whether Lee Doran of the channel How the World Works is using sock accounts or not in order to pump up his subscriber list. The debate started with a movie by the user Crystal Balls. He posted it on September the 15th. It was titled, How the World Works Give the Big Thanks to His Sock Accounts, or er, I mean Subscribers. Now in it, Crystal Balls presented a list of accounts that he felt weren't really owned by anyone, but were instead used solely to subscribe to How the World Works. Now they were suspect because the channels were quiet and unused, and their only real feature were subscriptions to How the World Works and a few related accounts. Now, when this movie was featured by another user, Thunderfoot, uh, How the World Works got involved, and he denied it in a response video. And there's been debate between investigators and supporters for a few days now. Now, I got involved with something that I noticed in one of the movies that was on the investigating side. The user, Screeching Insanity, had a movie posted called How the World Works, CEI, and Sock Accounts 3. In it, he had his own list of potential sock accounts that he had culled from the subscriber list of the account Policy Translated, an account related to Lee Doran. Now, that movie's not up right now. One of the accounts in the list, a Chuckles Lord, came forth and identified himself. So, worried that there might be more false positives, Screeching Sandy took the movie down. However, while it was up, I noticed an annotation next to a suspected account called Sock993. Screeching had written in the annotation, and this is paraphrased. Look at this account, even the name itself says Sock. Uh, it got me thinking. If Sock 993 really was an obvious Sock, then there was a chance that it was part of a larger series of accounts, all starting with the letters SOC. So, I typed in http colon slash slash youtube.com slash user slash Sock 992. And there it was. It was also an account that was quiet and unused. There were no comments or activity. Uh, they joined April 13, 2008, 203 videos watched. However, there were no subscriptions listed. Now I tried SOC 991, but there wasn't any. But there was a SOC 990, and a SOC 987, a SOC 979, a SOC 976, a SOC 971, and so on. They appeared randomly but frequently as you went up and down the numbers. Now it goes upwards a long way. I didn't check too hard while going upwards, but I know that there's at least a SOC 2508. Now sometimes there would be a favorite or two listed, sometimes a random friend or a token subscription. Sometimes the lettering of the account name would change case, going from uppercase to lowercase. A SOC 951 and SOC 976 had comments to videos, but they were brief and random. So basically, these were accounts in the same style that Cristobal suspected themselves. SOC 912 is interesting. First, the account creation date goes far, far back, October 9, 2005. And the video's watched count is very high, 8,754. But there were only two friends, two subscriptions, and no recent activity. Now what was also interesting is that only the first one, SOC 993, had subscriptions to How the World Works. The rest seemed unbranded. They seemed to be lying dormant, maybe waiting to be activated with someone's subscription in the future. Now I started to think about this. Supporters of How the World Works say that it was unlikely for Lee Dorn to have started creating a number of SOC accounts several years ago, and to watch hundreds of thousands of videos for each of them all planning ahead for some future account that he might make. And that's true, that would be unlikely. However, I don't think that was the method he used. I think, instead, Lee took advantage of a third-party service, one that farms SOC accounts on their own and then gives them to their clients. Now, for a SOC puppet service, starting channels many years back and giving them regular video views is an investment. A good SOC channel gains more and more credibility as it gets older and collects views, aging like fine wine, if you will. Now, if I was a SOC puppet service, and I had a client, I wouldn't just give them a bunch of channels marked SOC 800, SOC 900, and so on, because that would be too detectable. Instead, 
what I do is manage several different series of channels and parcel out one channel from each of my series to my clients. So I decided to check this out. I looked up Cristobal's original video and I collected a list of suspected account names from the video that I could investigate. Now first was pseudonym25. I took the name and I started playing with the numbers and started looking up accounts. Now there was a pseudonym24 and a pseudonym23, pseudonym22, and each of these are the same kind of blank sauce that I had seen before. Now Cristobal's mentioned the Weave 70. Well, I found the Weave 62, the Weave 61, the Weave 44, the Weave 23. A few days ago, the user Thunderfoot had featured Cristobal's original movie, and then a day later stopped doing so. So a user named Titan1839 showed up and left a comment on Cristobal's channel, taunting him about this. Now, as it happens, the channel Titan1839 is part of another series. Here is 1840, Titan1848, and Titan1824. Now, finding the regular series that a suspected account might belong to can be tricky. It's been easy so far because these are a simple name followed by a number. But, for instance, the suspected account Redbeard5598 might sound easy to check, but I didn't have much luck after a dozen trots. And with large numbers like 5598 on the end, the series might be scattered too thinly to really be worth hunting for. However, I did find some interesting alternate patterns while I was searching through accounts. For instance, let's take the suspected account I Heart Philosophy. Here is I Heart Science. Here is I Heart Politics. Uh, what's interesting is that I Heart Politics has a few favorites related to Soldier Boy, uh, because when I think politics, I think Soldier Boy. Muja 12 was a clever series. Now, if you try Muja 11 or 13 or whatever, you get nothing. However, I had some instincts and I tried Muka 12. Now it turned out to be a legitimate channel. But here is Mula 12, Muma 12, Muna 12, Muua 12, and Mupa 12. Mupa 12 likes chihuahuas. Now I think that's enough demonstration. If we're investigating the possibility of sock accounts, and we just have a list of individual accounts, and we don't know for sure if a certain account is a sock or not, try to find out can just end up a matter of he said, she said. You suspect, they deny, perhaps using the sock itself to deny with, so what can you do? Now, the user Chucklesword suggested a way for a sock account to prove themselves positively by making a video of themselves announcing their identity, but if a video for a channel doesn't appear, it could simply be because the channel owner didn't want to make a video or perhaps they walked away from this account a long time ago, and so forth. We can't really know for sure. We can look at potential signs, like how a channel seems to have no purpose but to subscribe to one user or one set of users, but there is still doubt, and because of this doubt, nobody gets anywhere. However, if a suspected channel is part of a recognizable series of accounts, and each of the other entries in the series has the same traits as an unused blank thought, and the fact that this channel also resembles the sock is a strong positive. And if there are several strong positives that we can find, then this tips the scale. It turned out that my theory held up. Lee Dorn of How the World Works contacted a third party to supply him with pre-made channels, and he was rationed out one channel for each of the series that the third party managed. And if we look at Titan 1839, it appears that he's been working with socks even up until now. One more matter. Some people are suggesting the possibility that these channels were created to frame how the world works. I don't think so. After Cristobal's initial movie, many of the SOC accounts came alive, starting to post channel comments, add extra subscribers, and so on, not to mention insult and taunt the people who are poking at their channels. These aren't the actions of someone trying to frame how the world works. These are the actions of someone trying to cover up and confuse the situation. When the question of sock accounts first came up, it was just suspicion. I don't think anyone involved was saying that action should be taken. 
since there were still a lot of doubts as to whether these accounts of crystal balls identified really were stocks, and that was reasonable. However, I think with these new facts coming to light, these suspicions are now very firm. So, to the people watching this video, please contact YouTube administration and let them know what you suspect that the YouTube partner How the World Works is doing to inflate his subscriber list. Thank you.